when we began making the record, they were all songs by people I know, friends. So we had a, we originally had a, a, an Elvis song we recorded, uh, and we had a Clash song, uh, and we had a Christy Moore song. We were going to do a Wonder Stuff song, or by you know mates, and then we kind of realised that whatever versions we did of those songs, they would be just compared to the originals. And the originals were probably always going to be better. So we said, let's just do songs that nobody knows, but they're just as brilliant. And uh, as we've gone on and on throughout the year and working out how we're going to formulate the whole thing, it's just, it's turned out perfect. And the songs have just turned out perfect. Then we've gone and done, we've kind of covered one of my songs as well, which we've been doing today, by doing Name and Number, because it was never a particularly good version of it when we did it back with Pele 23 years ago and today we just completely brought it alive it was my idea I said why don't we re-record name a number the, the song that is central to the modern day Amsterdam set because people are forever coming to watch us and going, what was that song? And I go, well, you can't get it anymore. It got deleted years ago. And also the version we do now is completely different to then because it's an elongated kind of the Celtic soul vibe where everybody takes a solo and then we all unify at the end. Why don't we go in and record it and get an audience? Because today we've played to an audience as well, essentially. When Ian said about doing it, I thought, oh, I'm not sure. And then we played it a few times live, and then he showed me a, um, one of the things on YouTube, and I just thought, oh, yeah, well, that's, that's a winner. Because it was, it, it, was it was a song we used to play in the set, but it wasn't the sort of the standout song back then, back in the Pele days. It was something that um, would come in and out of the set. But okay. um, now I think it's, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the storms of the Amsterdam set. You know. Yeah, it would have been the early 90s when I, um, yeah, but my brother was still, you know, living down here and um, and I was down south and, um, yeah, and they used to, uh, him and his mates, lady used to throw me bands all the time and, and I'd bounce a few back at them and, and Pele, yeah, Pele stuff right from the, from Raid the Palace was the first tune I heard and, uh, and from then on, me and me missus, um, got right into them, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And um, to see, a, especially to see a Pele tune getting another out on, on, on the new album, which is absolutely brilliant. The whole studio set up on the fact that they're all kind of in little sort of cubicles almost, you know, and it's very separated, and yet he seems to be the thing that, you know, brings it all together kind of thing. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I think Ian's sort of um, come up and explained everything, what's going on, what they're doing next, so he's, he's sort of put us at ease. Yeah. Um, centres the bar and that so <laughs> it's been uh, it's been really good well it's been brilliant to have Robbo involved mm -hmm. you know who, who, who genuinely is the, the most intuitive musician I've ever worked with in my life you know he's very much uh, uh, a rock and roll Hammond organ player and you know me and Robbo bonded over the Stranglers over 30 years ago to have him come back and play on some of the music today was, was a, a joy personal joy. We had the four uh, Celtic musicians who came in and played uh, and obviously we've got Tony Carley, you know, the greatest drummers in the in the country today and um, it, it, the whole troupe and situation that we had on the floor, in the room as we played, we were we were due to go through the song five or six times and take us it. We nailed it on the second take. <laughs> I played in bands for five or six years before Pele came along the scene. And I used to go and watch Gene play in a band called When in Rome. <laughs> and there was, I just knew this guy had something, something happened. When he went on stage, magic happened. And he, it does help having good musicians, but you've got to have that spark. And the guy's got the spark. <laughs> No, 
thought this was, yeah, this is just, just, yeah. The way that I, I, well, I want to record the next album like this. <laughs> I'm not sitting, I'm not sitting in front of a laptop anymore. That's the, that's the way forward. 